Potrebska. The next few episodes of Back at Home will be dedicated entirely to the childhood and early works of Polish-born composer Friedrich Chopin. He is beloved all around the world, but maybe not as much is known about his early years and his first compositions. Today I will play for you three polonaises that Chopin composed as a 7 and a 12 year old boy. I will also tell you about his parents, his first and only piano teacher Wojciech Żywny, and while you're at it, uh, you will also learn a little bit about that very interesting and turbulent time in the history of Poland. This program is made with the support of the Culture, Science and Education Grant from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Poland. Have you ever wondered how a Polish boy would get such a French last name? Well, Chopin's father was actually French, Nicolas. Nicolas, as a youth, was working uh, in a Polish-owned estate in France. The family adored him and exposed him to literature, art and music. He was said to have played the flute quite well. The family moved back to Poland and took Nicola with them. He was uh, 16 years old at the time and even though he did think about returning to France for a moment, he wasn't so keen on the idea of being enlisted in the French army. He was also very moved by the Constitution of May 3rd, 1791, which was closely modeled after the American Constitution of uh, 1788. He decided to stay and changed his name Nikola to its Polish equivalent, Mikołaj. Mikołaj worked as a French tutor for aristocratic Polish families in and around Warsaw. He taught the five children of Countess Ludwika Skarbek, who lived in Żelazowa Wola, which is where young Friedrich will be born. This is also where he will meet the mother of his children, Justyna Krzyżanowska. Justyna was the daughter of an estate manager. Upon his death, she was left penniless and almost too old to marry. She was already 24 years old and that by the standard of the time was considered uh, a spinster. Countess Ludwika Skarbek, who took Justyna in as a housekeeper, made a perfect match. Mikołaj and Justyna didn't waste any time and married within the year of their first meeting. Justyna was said to have been very musical she played the piano quite well and in fact became little Friedrich's first piano teacher. She also sang beautifully and it's lovely to think about her voice being perhaps the first music that little Friedrich ever heard. Friedrich was born in 1810 in Żelazowa Wola on the Skarbek estate. The date of his birthday was March 1st, even though due to the clerical error, his birthday is sometimes listed as February 22nd. We know that the family always celebrated Chopin's birthday on March 1st. Chopin was born in the Duchy of Warsaw, created by Napoleon in 1807. As you may know, Poland at the time was getting invaded and eventually partitioned uh, by the three neighboring powers, Russia, Prussia and Austria, to the point where in 1795, Poland as a sovereign country completely disappeared from the map of Europe. Just a few years after, even the Duchy of Warsaw would be taken over by Tsar Alexander, who crowned himself the King of Poland. The family didn't spend a lot of time in Żelazowa Wola. Right in 1810, when Chopin was a baby, his father was offered a position of a professor of French language in the Warsaw Liceum, a position that he accepted. 
the whole family moved to Warsaw where they were given rooms in the palace that housed the Liceum. Industrious and dedicated as Mikołaj was, he also opened a boarding school adjacent to the Liceum. The boarding school became very popular and sought after. The tuition fees were astronomical and only a few boys were lucky enough to be admitted. This is how Frederick would make his first childhood friends. Frederick was the second of four Chopin children. His older sister Ludwika was also a skilled pianist and a linguist. The two would sit at the piano together. Uh, Chopin was to have been very moved by the sound of the piano and always insisted on learning what Ludwika was learning. He very quickly outpaced her, however, and this was the moment where Justyna and Mikołaj, his parents, decided to hire a professional piano teacher. Wojciech Żywny was a Czech-born violinist, pianist and a composer. He was very beloved in Warsaw, where he taught the children of aristocratic families. Wojciech Żywny, who also taught the boys at the boarding school, immediately recognized a very unusual talent that Frédéric Chopin had and encouraged him not only to learn the pieces uh, of other composers, but to study how they were put together, preparing young Frédéric for his later endeavors as a composer. Givne also encouraged the boy to improvise at the piano and the boy did it with great joy. In fact, he said later that all his compositions were simply written down improvisations. Mikołaj Chopin bought a grand piano for the apartment and the family always gladly invited guests over for musical soirees. There was a lot of poetry, laughter, and of course music in the house. Young Frederick always very gladly jumped on the piano bench to play for others, which was not so much the case uh, when he became an adult. Frederick's performance debut took place when the boy was barely eight years old. It was a charity concert in one of the aristocratic salons of Warsaw. He immediately stole the hearts of the guests and became compared to Mozart and referred to as a Polish Mozart. One can only imagine adorable little boy lovingly dressed by his mother in velvet and lace performing for the enchanted audience. It was also at that time, at eight years old, where little Friedrich composed and published his first piece, the Polonaise in G minor, which you will hear in a second. His teacher, Wojciech Żywny, knew that this was a very important moment in a young boy's career. He was said to have been the one to write out the first fair copy of the Polonaise in his experienced hand. He was also the one to convince a publisher to print young boy's music, which would later become his calling card. Wojciech Żywny may have been an eccentric dresser and was certainly known for his bouts of sneezing caused by heavy use of his snuff box, but he was very instrumental in directing Chopin's career very early on and he became an important and beloved presence in the Chopin household even after the lessons with Frédéric were abandoned. And now let's hear Chopin's first Polonaise in its entirety.
is really hard to imagine that the piece would have been written by an eight-year-old. You hear the full seriousness of this noble Polish dance, which would never be run. It was always walked with full seriousness and weight. Little Chopin establishes the mood here, and he follows by introducing the most characteristic Polonaise rhythm. Now, this next passage must have completely stolen the hearts of the listeners. Just imagine an eight-year-old boy, lovingly dressed by his mother, playing this. Exploring the full range of the keyboard and the color of the beautiful grand piano. Now, Wojciech Żywny, Chopin's piano teacher, always encouraged him to study works of other composers in terms of how they are constructed, not just by learning the notes. And so here you see that Chopin very carefully follows the structure that was popular at the time, where small sections are repeated, you will hear each section of the piece twice, and the key structure is very carefully planned out. We start in G minor, however the next section will already be written in what's called a relative major in B flat on a little happier and sunnier note perhaps. Now you will see this adorable hand crossing here. round cadence that corresponds perhaps to a little bow after a sequence of dance. Now the hand crossing may have been what prompted the audience in the high society of Warsaw to compare little Chopin to Mozart. In the following section of the piece you will really notice the inspiration of the music of the classical era in the so-called Alberti bass. This is something that uh, Mozart, Hummel, Beethoven in his early period employed in their sonatas and uh, Chopin very beautifully incorporates it here. Now let's hear the second Polonaise in B flat major.
as you could hear, this polonaise starts with a true fanfare where you can imagine trumpets and drums. <laughs> Chopin sticks to his inspirations, which were those of classical music, the music of the late 18th century. The texture is very close to what Mozart might have written. Chopin, despite his young age, is already developing his sweeping lyrical long lines, such as here. We know that Chopin was a great fan of opera and singing in general. He later would tell his students that in order to play the piano well, they needed to learn how to sing. Now, in the next section of this polonaise, Chopin is almost directly quoting another polonaise written by Michał Kleofas Oginski uh, called The Farewell to the Fatherland, Pożegnanie Ojczyzny. This here is taken almost note for note from this very well known at the time polonaise. Now look at this phrasing. Chopin could have written but he was a very attentive student of the earlier music and one sees quite a lot of uh, phrasing against the bar line, against the beat in the music of Mozart as well as early Beethoven which we know that Chopin studied and knew well. Just listen to this. goes against the grain of the beat or of the bar line. I personally find it very inspiring that Chopin was really growing up in the spirit of classicism and that his music was conceived in that spirit. Even though we know Chopin as a great romantic, even though the emotions run very high in his music, uh, the textures remain very classical, very clear and transparent. And you can already hear his affinity for delicate sound. We know that Chopin despised playing that was forceful and loud, and he tried to distance himself from it, often comparing it to barking. Uh, he much preferred working within the realm of piano and pianissimo, the softest dynamics, exploring the colors rather than the volume of the instruments. His later reviewers were not always happy about this, and one French newspaper called his sound rather microscopic. In fact, we know that Chopin much preferred to play for a select group of familiar faces gathered around the piano rather than in large concert halls. He was said to have said that audiences truly frighten him. In fact, we know that uh, what ended up being Chopin's last recital in Paris um, was a concert hall arranged as a small salon. Camille Pleyel, a piano maker who closely collaborated with Chopin, was his great fan, uh, gathered flowers and put carpets on the floor of the stage to recreate the atmosphere of an intimate salon setting. This polonaise in A flat major was published in 1821, when Chopin was already 12 years old. It is lovingly dedicated to Wojciech Żywny par son élève, by his student Frédéric Chopin. It is hard to believe that Chopin and Żywny would soon abandon their lessons together and that Chopin would never have another piano teacher again.
even though Chopin is only 12 when writing this polonaise, we can already hear a preview of the elegance and the elevated atmosphere that will fill his later polonaises, specifically the polonaise that shares the same key of A flat major, the heroic polonaise op. 53. I will make sure to give you the link in the description so you can hear a full performance of the piece. But just listen to this glorious beginning. Very outgoing, very rich and luscious melodic line full, filled with pride and sense of patriotism. Chopin was spending quite a bit of time in the presence of the Polish aristocracy and he became quite comfortable with their customs and behaviors, something that came in certainly very handy uh, later on when he lived in Paris and became a very important member of the Parisian high society. In the second section of the Polonaise, Chopin crosses his arms one more time, taking the melody to the bass. which helps us come back to the main theme. I hope this gives you a little bit of an insight into the childhood, early work and the world of sound uh, in which Frédéric Chopin grew up. In the next episode, I will tell you about Chopin's travels to Szafarnia, Poland, which is where he heard folk music for the first time. And that folk music greatly inspired his mazurkas throughout his life. For now, thank you for tuning in. And as always, I invite you to subscribe to my channel where you will find many more videos on the Back at Home playlist. Take care and stay well.